Alrighty, let's just call the meeting to order. We have today's date, which is Tuesday, September 3rd. Welcome to Orca. Welcome to Skippy. <laughs> and welcome to Eric and our folks online, Samantha. And that looks like it. Alrighty. Thanks for coming, everybody. So our first order of business is to approve the minutes of August 20th, 2024, regular meeting and public forum. Oh, that was August 20th? The public no, forum was the 6th. Sorry. So this is a copy over or something. Sorry, it's a copy over. Okay, so a regular meeting. Let's right. just scratch. No public forum, everybody. Um, is there a motion? I read the notes. I'm motion that we approve the minutes okay. of August 20th. Is there a second? Okay, Vic seconds it. All those in favor of the minutes from August 20th, uh, say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Randy abstains for lack of presence at the meeting. Approving the agenda for September 3rd, 2024, regular meeting. Is there any amendments to the agenda, Sarah? No. Okay, and uh, is there a motion? A motion to approve the agenda. All right, and a second from Vic. All those in favor of said agenda for September 3rd? Aye. Say aye. 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 Okay. So we are going to now um, ask the people in Zoom and Paul's iPhone to go All right. Okay, so under executive session under 1 BSA statute 313A1D to discuss a grievance against a town employee, no action. I'll make that motion. Okay, I'll and second. Already, Vic moves but and. We have yeah. to say who we're going to Yeah, include. who would you like to have come? Eric? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Eric. Eric and, um, and I guess it's just us. And just us. Yeah. Any reason for Sarah, Sarah to, to be go? involved? Uh, the only reason you want me is to just make sure that I get all this, make sure people are yeah. deal with them. But Michelle is outside. Do you want me to let, do you want her yeah. to attend this meeting? Uh, is, was she privy to anything or no? So right. no, I don't I'm think so. Take a, take okay. Okay, hold on for a second. So Moral Vic support. moved and Sarah second. Okay. Yep. <laughs> all righty. So um, are you going to put Paul and Samantha and Orca into, and um, excuse me, um, Orca, you'll need to turn off your oh. video. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so we are out of executive session. It is 5.20. We're on the highway report. Um, so I think what we should do probably is um, uh, maybe add the um, Richard Cowell's um, culvert concerns at the end of the highway report. So let's go through the highway report and then we can talk about the correspondence between Richard Cowles and myself um, and what's transpired uh, over the last couple of weeks about that culvert on Eastville Road. Okay, so highway report, so, Mr. Eric? Sure, so uh, within the last couple of weeks we did uh, repairs on Bulldog Road in Tangletown uh, they're on they just finished up story road today, and they'll be going on to Nelly Chase tomorrow um, Our freight liner is repaired, and I should be able to pick that up tomorrow, so we'll have that back um, So we'll have all three trucks Yay! What was the determination of uh, there were some uh, corroded wires there was uh, leaky transmission lines uh, there was an oil leak they fixed. There's a few things, exhaust leak. They went through and checked it all out. There was quite a bit of work. Which truck was that? The Freightliner. And where did you take it? Uh, Charlie Boys. Oh, oh so that's, this, that's the build that's yeah. in here. Yeah, they did quite a bit of work to it. Yeah, it looked like some front suspension work. Uh, radiator and stuff like that, some exhaust. I don't think there was suspension, maybe. I don't think so. I think it was. Uh, it was a big bill. Yes, it was. New radiator because the radiator was corroded on the bottom. Okay. And for Dirt Tech and their work? 
Uh, do you have an update on that or? Uh, that they've been working on East Hill, yeah. um, Brook, and uh, Center. Um, they need to put um, the stone down, and then we'll we'll grade and things like that. Yeah. I don't, Dan. I didn't okay, connect I with Dan anything. today. Okay. Um, I did do a post about slow down. Um, okay. On those culverts. Alrighty. Um, Hopefully, I'll have time tomorrow to grade those. And everything's working out with the new staff. Everyone's yep. acclimating to their jobs. That's great. Yep. So far, so good. Good. Um, and we had FEMA visit about the 2024 Hurricane Barrel Emergency Declaration. Mm -hmm. um, who wants to give an update on that? Do you? Sure. Okay. Um, well, really, we had uh, visitors um, for the uh, public assistance because they're opening up uh, Barry and Waterbury um, with FEMA actually we're not meeting with them this week because we're doing so well with Do you our mean individual assistance yes. yes individual assistance okay yeah I thought we were meeting on Thursday we are not meeting on or Thursday change. I told Dirk we don't need him this week he can keep working on the spreadsheets I've given him so I've filled out Sweet. almost 11 <laughs> spreadsheets Dirk's uh, going through six of them um, Steve and I were wrapping up the last five today we have like three questions to answer before those okay go out awesome and so you met with FEMA about individual assistance in, at the Waterbury Center and we met at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. with this new group that came in just okay. to say and Sarah put a post on front porch forum okay. for people to follow up with that okay um, I do have uh, for road committee is that part of this yeah sure we're answering the questions from August 6 Vic shout out to Vic answered all Thank his you, Vic. questions for team fix um, Marianne's putting those together and then we'll have it on what's next Middlesex and I'll Great. be posting it on front porch forum and I heard back um, of those hazard mitigation grants that we filled out um, they're starting to look at them and we um, have been invited to apply more for the portal road slope stabilization which we had estimated at two hundred thousand okay. dollars and I just heard back also that they are um, suggesting that instead of the twenty thousand dollars we were asking for mccullough hill bridge that maybe we do a, they use we use that money for a study so they want they have more questions for us and we are going to have to do a little bit more work um so i'll call on the road committee and see who's willing to okay take a look at that and then there was one of your um volunteers who sent a letter of resignation unfortunately yeah unfortunately Ken Davis um, is having some health problems so he has resigned from the road committee um, but he sent us a really nice write-up um, if anybody could yeah. take a look at that um, with some suggestions okay. moving forward with things that we've been talking about I just don't know Liz Allen if you want to put that in correspondence or just business I think it just falls under here the okay. same thing yeah so that it's all about roads um, okay and so with his suggestions are those things that like you feel like your road subcommittee would sort of take a look at and yep absolutely maybe review some of this stuff i think what we'd like is to bring something to the select board um, okay. a real you know like let's make a decision on this here's a suggestion type of thing okay. coming up to nice. be well thank to. you ken davis for your service to the road yeah subcommittee um, yes. I got a couple of things Randy. under roads. A okay. couple questions. Yep. Wondering um, if we can just remind Dirt Tech or ask them to get road close signs um, at the end of the roads it's or closer funny. to the, the entrance of the roads instead of 100 feet from where they're actually closing. I, I noticed on Brook Road they had it on both ends today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know I, last I week uh, McCullough no? Hill was. I could have sworn I drove by and it said road closed. It said no through traffic. So for Brook Road, I have seen that. I don't I know why I people complain on Brook Road because as I come down, you know, Shady Rill, where it splits, there's a road closed. And then as I get down to Steve, there's a guy in a truck with, a, you know, stopping people. But McCullough Hill is McCullough, having issues. McCullough yeah. Hill was So the, maybe yeah, some of the small the one that I, I received I'll, I'll, more I'll feedback. And yeah. I actually got, I got caught up in it myself where halfway down the road and you get turned around to go all the way back the other side so I happened to see some people and we stopped and chatted and they were just like oh it'd be oh. nice if it was down at the other end yeah was that on uh, Wednesday last week uh, yes um, it was that was very confusing because it said Murray's they were closing house, on Tuesday and they didn't they didn't do it and then they did it on Wednesday say that like again that. they were doing some work on 
I was told the people that live there are Murrays. Everybody knows everybody around here except for me. Right. But uh, I think the number was like 181 or 191 or something like that. Murphy. Um, Murphy. Yeah. The one that took out all those trees out front. Yeah, Murphy. Yeah. Nancy Murphy. Nancy and Tim Murphy. Um, they had a sign when I, I drove to the other end, and they did have a sign and a staff member at that end of the road. East Hill? Yeah. On, no, on the bridge side. Okay. Um, so okay. that, Not on that the... the other side coming through with school traffic coming back up over. And we'll give them the whatnot. reminder. Yep. Um, and then the other thing uh, that I had questions about was um, uh, it looks like we're sitting on a bunch of dirt tech bills. Um, have we paid a them? large portion and I was told today we have not I think they had to redo some some uh, rewrite the bill to make it feel acceptable by road yeah so there was that comment came up when I asked about uh, it there was some question as to whether or not um, I asked the question as to whether or not they have provided what they needed to mm -hmm. back to us um, to be able to release those, but there was some concern around just so the I length met, of time. Yep, yeah, so I met with Steve today, like I said, and he did mention that he needs to call Tim at Dirt Tech to redo that bill. But just so you know, uh, with FEMA, they don't pay us back until we pay and then the check is cashed and we have the cashed <laughs> check. <laughs> so it definitely behooves us to... Go ahead and get it paid because yeah i mean at the end of the day i want their tech to submit bills that yep. are approved and we don't have issue with it i think that was pretty clear from the work that we did last year yeah so i don't think it should surprise anybody also to speed just so everybody knows to speed things along while i am filling out spreadsheets for 2023 cheryl has so graciously offered to use the blank uh, spreadsheet that fema has given us already so that she'll start plugging in 2024 as she gets bills and stuff so it'll be that much quicker yeah and the other question that i've heard lately is um people just wondering about what's being done to uh make sure there's not duplicative billing or work being done underneath like the 23 flood mm -hmm. and the 24 work um, how are we handling and managing that? Coding, coding, coding. Um, so there's a, there's A work, B work, C work with, with FEMA, which is A is like the, the pull apart, fix up stuff. B is the emergency work. C is the finish work. With Connie, with Dirt Tech, um, we have her doing not only that, but then saying that this is under this contract, this was emergency work, and then this is how we're going to continue because this road hadn't been finished kind of how, because we've had to ask FEMA too, with their RFQ stuff, we've got Dirt Tech here, don't you want us to get our roads back in order? Or do you really want us to RFQ and wait until next year? So they said, you know, go ahead. That's kind of, it's, and every time it comes and, and Cheryl can't figure it out, she bounces it right back to Connie. Is so. that, uh, as far as, just from my own understanding, um, with billing for that type of stuff, is that falling under the 23 guidelines for FEMA and the billing that we provide to them for, for any of that work? Or the, my guess is it'd be the 24, anything that was disturbed in the 24 that was still ongoing with the 23 flood. Uh -huh. I that, think Eric could probably. I'm a little confused on your question. Yeah. So we, and I'll tell you, I'll back up one step just to, so you understand where my brain is going. Yeah. Um, the the 25 percent match yep. um is really what i'm focused on and and they waived that for the 23 stuff mm -hmm. so the town gets more reimbursement for that and mm -hmm. um understanding what fema is allowing us to code to that 23 flood anything that happened versus the 23 flood versus the 24 anything that flood. happened after july 11th 24 cannot go under the 23. But let's just so say. So if they haven't completed the, right. sorry, if they haven't completed the contract work for 23. Then you just, well, no, because then you just do. But it was contract. disturbed for 24. For right, and then it doesn't matter. If they're still going to finish the 23 stuff. Okay. If the so contract the, says they need to do X, Y, and Z for 23 stuff, and it wasn't completed yet, 
then they need to do that, and that'll be still under the 23. So, even though it's fixing the 24 problem as well. Yeah, well, because yeah. that's where it meshes together, yeah. right? Yeah. It's the right. emergency work for yeah. the 24 flood. Yeah. If it was re, uh, if the impact happened in 24 at all, because we've already bid that work out, and they mm -hmm. need to bring it up to that certain standard. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's where my brain was going. Yep. yep. And like, let's let's think of this example. Let's just say, for example, Member Culver Hill Road. I think still had to get the top put yep. on it, and that would have been 23 work that hadn't been done yet. But it was done. It was finished right before the 24. Okay. Well, let's just say. Okay. For purposes of like, okay, it hadn't happened yet. And then let's just say the road blew out again. Well, only the top surface co would be covered for the yeah. 23 stuff. Only the top surface, right. So then the repair work would be under 2024. And then when they went to put the surface back on that they had never gotten to, that would be go to 2023. Correct. So there's a lot of paper. There is a lot of paper trail there's and a, a lot of coding. Of oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yes, there is. <laughs> Speaking of uh, that, putting that material down, were they supposed to start on Portal Road this week? Was it this week? I don't remember hearing about Portal Road, but I know that the end of last week, like things got, you know, you said something like was going to happen Tuesday and it happened Wednesday. Stuff happens. I mean, I you know, he I tells me. But it's very it. confusing when you best when laid you put it out. well, best laid plans of mice and men. You can either have the heads up that's, or not have the heads up. That's poor attitude. <laughs> No, no, what I'm saying, no, I understand what she's saying, yeah. but there, sh there should be a little more effort because then it gets you to believe she don't know what the hell she's talking about. Don't even read it. And there's a lot of well, people don't read front porch farm. Yeah. The plan is, mm -hmm. plans are subject to change, right? So our best, yeah, I agree. But I also, Vic, don't want to get into a thing where I'm having to post every day because that's not my job and I'm not paid for it. So... You know, I'm trying to wean people to like a couple of posts a week, and I'm trying to give people the information that is pertinent and to people them. People need to plan accordingly, right? I mean, yeah. you don't rush out hoping you're going to get to your doctor's appointment when you know that the roads are not entirely in great shape. Always have a plan B, folks. Um, okay, so um, did you have all your questions yeah, answered? Yeah, I think that's... Okay. So it also looks like we have a $12,000 municipal roads grant that I see here, Sarah, that I'll sign. Yeah, you guys have already it. Well, okay. Part yeah. Of yeah. Eric is the grantee, but should I sign it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I just have that? Sure. Sorry. Have you got, I didn't bring a pen. You got that figured out where you're going to do that? Not yet, but we have until next year. Yeah. Yeah, and no, and we've got that. other grants coming that we might need. Some. Sorry, <laughs> I've got ideas. But. Yeah. Okay. Um... Alrighty. So while we're on the subject of roads, um, we've had correspondence with Richard Cowles about the culvert on um, right above his house, which is um, on East Hill Road, 350 East Hill Road. So it's the culvert above his house. Um, and he's concerned about the water that um, is draining through the culvert. It's a cross culvert and it's draining um, down in and sort of creating a gully and going down into his um, pond. And he also has some concerns, although I'm not quite sure how this would happen, that the water would somehow reach his barn or his, his buildings, his garage. I'm not... My recollection is that that wouldn't be possible, but I, I don't. But that was his main concern. That was his main focus today in the meeting. It was, was the, okay, was the barn. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we um, did uh, sort of try to get some more information because he's um, stating a um, policy that was signed by our select board back in the Mary Alexander days. Um, that says um, let me find if I have the agenda. that says under part G culverts when placing a culvert across a town road which will divert water onto private property the culvert owner shall obtain from the owner of the private property 
a signed right-of-way agreement which permits said diversion of water. The signed agreement shall be submitted to the town clerk prior to culvert installation. Um, so that's what he's citing, and, and he says that we did not ask uh, permission of him um, to install the culvert. And now my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong about this whole culvert, is that we believe the culvert's been there for 30 plus years, yeah. um, that it was first a concrete culvert um, that was put in by Picard. Uh, no, no, Picard was there, but it was put in by uh, Carl Wendell. Carl, okay, Carl Wendell. Um, it was then later changed to a smaller metal um, culvert, and that was maybe by Gary Lamell. Gary Lamell, our road foreman, way back when, at least twenty years ago. He was the road foreman when I moved here, twenty-four years ago. Um, and then in um, after the July 2023 flood, we eventually upgraded it in June of 2024 mm -hmm. to a 24-inch 20, inch culvert. Um, which is one size above the bare, bare minimum for state requirements. Okay, which is one size, which is 18 inches, the bare minimum? Bare okay, minimum so it's one size and it above. it was a 15-inch. Yeah. So Mr. Cowles would um, uh, believes that in his um, experience doing construction, that if we got rid of the culvert altogether, removed this 24-inch culvert altogether, that the and and installed a driveway culvert right below that culvert on the opposite side of the road of his house, that the water, if you're coming down East Hill Road heading towards Montpelier, that water coming down from Bill Dorgan's, the, the next culvert up at Bill Dorgan's coming down on the left, will go through this new neighbor's driveway culvert and continue its way down in through the riprap and stonework on the left, where we could then potentially install another culvert below his uncle's art shed. It is the um, recommendation of the state and all foremen current past and present and commissioners that removing that culvert is not will will not um, and 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 putting in a neighbor's culvert and allowing the water to just go down the riprap is not gonna be sufficient. And in the next big storm that we have, East Hill Road will be blown out because there will just be too much water. So it is the recommendation of everyone who has seen this, except for Richard, that the water continue to um, stay in that culvert, in the new 24 inch culvert, and continue to empty into the gully, which is on Mr. Callis's property. And that no one believes that there's a scenario with the types of storms that we've had where the road will not get blown out with Richard's suggestion. We would like it to be that. I would have loved to have someone say, that should be, that should be okay, let's give it a try. But there's, a, there's no scenario right now where anyone is recommending that. So this leaves us with what I understand from our lawyer. This leaves us um, with um the um okay so then there's then there's some state um i don't know if there's yeah there's statutes um so the state statutes let me just find those from i just i sent those to you didn't i uh, I like i'm just looking at my sent email when i left yeah let me just look at my sent email maybe i didn't um looks like yeah, that's what I'm just, um, I'm looking for the helper one. I will, I will say just to clarify, um, okay. Todd Eaton, who is with Vermont Local Roads, who knows, who has the standards, with that slope of road, we should be having them every 75 feet. I talked with the, uh, the river scientist at uh, the 
meeting that we had on the 6th. Mm -hmm. And minimum, even without exorbitant grade, is every 300 is what they recommended. Yeah, and that's a flat road. Okay. This is like a this is enough slope where they need 75. Right. Okay, so and right now it's like a thousand or something, right? Yeah. Because you can't. And so and and from what I understand from Eric and others is that it's ideal, but it's not always possible because there might be ledge, right? You can't necessarily, and in this case, there's no place for well, the water just, to. It's just his house. And his, his house is there, yeah, right? So you can't, can't dump it onto his house. And it would be going uphill. And it would be going, right, yeah. Um, so one thing I did want to ask is, is there a scenario where we could, you know how on the left is the ditching and the riprap? Can you do ditching and riprap on the right as well? Well, you'd be doing it on his yard. Right, but isn't that our right of way? Yeah. But his yard is quite a bit higher than the other day. It's higher, okay, yeah. So it wouldn't actually have the any way effect. It goes, the way it goes down, it kind of, everything slopes to gotcha. the ditch, and it's, it's up here. Okay. So there are two statutes that Rob Halpert um, uh, turned us on to. One is statute um, out of the Vermont State Title 19, Section 950, Establishment by Select Board, <clears throat> Vermont Statutes 2024 edition, Statute 950, Establishment by Select Board. It states, and this was added, the history, it was added back in 1985. It states, Select Board may lay out, establish, construct, or cause to be constructed and maintained a drain, ditch, or water course leading from a highway in the town across the lands of any person to a water course to carry away the surface water from the highway or other drainage necessary for public health if judges the public good or the necessity or convenience of individuals requires this work. The next statute is 951, damages. The select board shall follow the procedures established in section 923 of this title. 923, statute, quasi-judicial process. In order to protect the rights of interested persons and the public, the process described in this section shall be used whenever so provided by other provisions of this title. As used in this section, quote, interested person, end quote, means a person who has a legal interest of, rec of record in the property that would be affected by proposed action. So that would be Richard. Richard. One, notice. The select bill shall give written notice by certified mail or by one of the methods allowed by Rule 4 of the Vermont Rules of Civil Procedure for service of original process to any interested person describing the proposed activity affecting the property. The notice shall include a date and time when the select board shall inspect the premises. The notice shall precede the inspection by 30 days or more, except in the case of an emergency. So we can retroactively do this if necessary. Number two, inspection of premises. The select board shall view the area and receive any testimony pertinent to the problem, including suggested awards for damages, if any. Number three, necessity. The select board shall decide on the necessity for the activity or work proposed, keeping the culvert in, and establish any conditions for accomplishing it. This includes the award of damages, if applicable. The select board shall announce the decision and the reason for it within 10 days of the inspection unless the select board formally delays the proceeding in order to receive more testimo testimony. Number four, notifying parties. The select board shall notify the interested person and other interested parties of its decision. It shall file a copy of its decision with town clerk within 10 days of its announcement. Number five, appeal if an interested person Richard is dissatisfied with the award for the damages. He or she may appeal using any of the procedures listed in Chapter 5 of this title. Notice or position for appeal or petition for appeal shall not delay the proposed work or activity. So that's the next step. Yes. 
So if this Randy. culvert has been in place for 35 years, as so stated yep. in the, uh, you know, I don't know as if any of that applies. There's no new activity. We're maintaining a culvert um, that, that's existing. We're not installing a new culvert. So yeah, I, I, I caught that too. This The first one, not this that you just wrote, but the first thing that you said that the select board had, it said install. It did not say replace in terms of getting a homeowner's permission. Yeah, we, don't, specifically we don't need said, to do that to maintain yeah. our existing... Okay. So I'm just saying that when I talked to the lawyer and explained all of this, there are nuances to this. And the fact that we upgraded the culvert is considered a change and or could be considered a change. He may not, you know, I, if this comes down to above and beyond what this process is allowing us to do, which is to go through the, this process, which we sh are probably gonna have to do retroactively. I see your hand, Paul, just a minute. Um, I think that, um, there, this isn't as cut and dry as it sounds. That's all. Yes, Vic. <coughs> From what you said, <coughs> excuse me, swallowed wrong. That's all right. <coughs> if, if you wanted to, which is really the question of getting water, uh, muddy water into his pond, you could. I mean, the town could, from what I understand, could ditch that all the way to his pond or a portion of his pond, put stone fill in. And clarify the water if you wanted to I mean it's a lot more work I would think there would almost have to be some kind of easement to do so though for us to go into his property wasn't it also suggested and he said that? oh yeah. that was there was something not to that extent but it was suggested that we do some other mitigation stuff and he wanted no part of it he doesn't want you on his line okay all right Paul Cerner would you like to make a comment yeah, so at one point, guys, Richard had mentioned doing some work um, on his own dime on the road in order to help facilitate this and all of that. Um, knowing that his his biggest concern is erosion and sediment, the way Vic's talking about, why would, why would Richard not just do the most least invasive and least dangerous approach to the town roads and stone armor with like a type one, type two, from the culvert outlet down to wherever his erosion problem is, that would that would literally take care of any and all issues. It's it would filter out sediment, sediment from yep. the road going to his pond. Okay. It would stabilize his banks from any erosion, and zero work has to be done to the road to potentially put it in danger. Even if the town wanted to contribute as as a means of like an in kind, uh, you know, happy medium seems far less invasive, far less dangerous than messing with the roads. I mean, I, I'm surprised Richard wouldn't be amenable if, if offered to do, you know, to do something like that. And all parties, you know, kind of meet in the middle on it. I agree. He, he was not very receptive to that at all today. Yeah, he's not receptive to anything where he has to, he was willing to put in on his own dime the neighbor's culvert and he, do that work. But he's not willing to do anything on his own property, on his own no. time or dime, and he does not want the water being poured onto his property, which leaves us with either we do it and we say, here's some damages, what those damages are and how we come to a cost of that, I have no idea. Um, one thing that the lawyer did say to me on the phone was, Something and this doesn't make sense, so I don't don't like. You can quote me because I'm recorded. But he said, "Has he been living there since before 1985 or after 1985?" Because these were written in 1985. It would have to be after I was 15 in 1985, and he's my age. <laughs> he's your age. I would imagine. Yeah, he got it from his uncle after 85. Yeah. What? He got the, he moved in after 85. He received it from his uncle Henry after 1985. That's what I would have I would have I would venture to guess that too. So if it's after 1985, these were all written in 85, but the culvert was put in before 1985. Then there may be nothing, and that is something that we would want to talk about with the lawyer. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I don't understand why the lawyer thinks that we would have recom 
would have to give him anything for us to... So the reason that culverts are going up is because they need to be and because of Biden's Build Back Better. I mean, this is a, this is a federal mandate that yeah. this administration has done for inter infrastructure. So that's what we, uh, as a town, are doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, do we not have any sort of recourse that if we put in a culvert in June and someone stops us from connecting it for three months, we as a town have no recourse? Well, we're going to have to connect it at some point soon because if we have a big rain event, then we're going to lose the road. Right. Because right now it's blocked off. And we really don't have much other choice to put, but to put Wait, that. Wait, isn't the 24 inch culvert in there? Yeah. Yes, but it's not ditched in front of it. He, he won't let anybody ditch it. Dirt tech and it's back on the in other June. side of his house. The word of water the can't get into it, is yeah. what you're saying. But, right. but we don't, this other. I, I, other so situation, you would have to remove so a whole bunch of like trees it. on the so left hand side all the way down through there to get a ditch big enough to handle water so that and you could. And there's ledge in that ditch too, so right. it's, it's a lot of work. And a lot so of could, you, could you please um, explain to me, I'm sorry, I, I can't visualize this. I know where the, the cross culvert is. What still needs to get done? So right as the inlet of the pipe. Inlet is on the left hand side as you're going down. Correct. Yeah. There's a section, probably about 10 to 15 feet long, that has not been finished ditching, ditched because he would not let us do it. This is when this all came about. So he would not let us ditch so, on the other side of the road that's not his property. So Liz, here's the road. Correct. Yeah, there's we the ditch. We ditched to here, then he stopped us. There's the culvert. So it's all... And that's his land over there. So he no, doesn't own it. this is his land Yeah, he here. doesn't own any land up here. Yeah, I didn't understand that. Piece. Regardless, it's still our right away. Right, I know. We've just got okay. to do it. Okay, so... I mean, but I don't want it to be that 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 there's any... Let's call the, sheriff, the sheriff's department and ask if they can go... Uh, they can, and I have to set up an appointment for them. And we didn't sign our... Let's send a bill to Richard. We didn't sign our... That was just for speeding. Good. No, well, yeah, but they're, they're going to charge us to sit there. Send the bill to Richard. Probably cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so I understand now that we still have to do something. I thought that maybe we were just going to let. No, it's not connected. Let it, it's, it's not, not connected. connected. And if okay. we have a couple of scoops, if we have a significant rain event, we could have a problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just need to know by connected for the minutes, I just want to clarify, and it's what Liz was talking about. So because there's no ditch there, the water has no, that's what you mean by connected. The water comes down the ditch, it should go in the culvert, go across the road, and go into another gully, another ditch. But that's not happening now. Correct. No. Right. That, right. he, he stopped before they yeah. got from the, the ditch that they had done to right. the actual culvert. Okay. So there's Thank a whole that's culvert. all I needed. Okay. There's because he was parking his chair there. Parking his what? Chair his there. Chair. He was physically impeding their progress. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I think I think the next steps would be to contact a law enforcement to see if we can. I can set that up. I mean, what are your thoughts? I I agree, but I don't know. Should Eric set it up, or should somebody else set it up? It doesn't matter. I don't want to. Do well, that. I don't know the timing and stuff. Right. I mean, we, I mean, I don't think as long as Eric's not interacting with Richard, okay. I think that's fine. Okay. You know, Eric should still be able to do the duties of his job. Okay. I, I just know. don't want to put him in a situation where he's having to deal with Richard By on an individual basis. No, yeah. I will not do that. Yeah. So, yes, about this hearing stuff. Is there anything we need? Are we going to hold a hearing? Are we going to warn a hearing? Well, so I, I think we have to. Yes, I think that we need to, and I think that I would like to get some clarity from. Mr. Halpert about um, how we go about um, interpreting the dates and the time that is when, when Richard has owned that property, the dates of this as well as the date of, I, I did see a, do you, do you see the copy of our, um, and is, does, does, the ta does the state trump the town right in terms of the statute like we have this thing that says we're going to ask permission of everyone that it, that How do it, we get rid of that we would have to rewrite it 
we'd have to rewrite our road, and we should probably. But that's on a new code. Add it to the list. Yeah, add it to the list. So we'd have to rewrite it. But do you, do you see that? Because I know there was a picture of Mary Alexander and Mary Skinner's signatures, and there must have been a date on it. Yeah, I have. It's two thousand three, right? Two thousand four. Two thousand three. I sent it to. I sent it to, I sent it to, okay. to Albert. Okay. Okay, that's what. Yeah. I, no, I mean, I think. There are no statutory cite. There are no citations of statutes in the, okay. in the policy. I don't know who passed this. I think before you even talk about setting up the hearing, I think. Halpert needs to tell us that's what needs to take okay, place. Okay, I think yeah. That I don't like think, based on what I heard, yeah, I don't feel like that's necessary. Okay, I don't either. Okay, but I would like to make sure. Okay, this says Shelley, um, with all the damages on property near right of ways, be careful setting a precedent. You will have, and I didn't see the rest of it. We'll have mm -hmm. to pay for all of it. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to pay for all of it. Okay. <laughs> I, I, um, I just. Anyway. Okay. So let me. Clarify. I guess I. Mm -hmm. I would like to clarify. Would you like me to set that up so that we can get that that particular? First, job? why don't I call Rob Helper okay. in the morning because I would know. like to let him know sort of the um, what we talked about at this meeting and um, and get his suggestion. But we do know that the work needs to be done mm -hmm. before the snow flies. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, um, I don't think there's there anything else that people have questions about for that particular correspondence. Okay. Um, I just want to tell you that the, uh, unless he's got a different middle name, he got the property, it was due to him in 2000, 2020, so that's, was 24 Four years, years ago. ago. Okay, so 2020. All right. No, 2000, I've been saying. It's oh, two, 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 the property in 2000. 24 okay. years ago. Not 1985, right? Not 1985, yeah, okay. Um, so these statutes are from 1985, the state statutes. Right. And so our so. thing is from 2003, but it doesn't cite any state we, statutes. We are in the process of getting uh, affidavits from people that know about the culvert and about how long it's been there so that we can... Okay. Because we have no... Oh, there's no record. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so we're getting um, so we're getting information. <coughs> Just to confirm the, the how long it's yeah, been there. Um, from past road mm -hmm. people. It's definitely been there before two thousand. Yeah. Uh, much. Let's see. I got past road crew. Um, <laughs> I don't want to took over and then um, we are going to ask um, Helper, well, my, I guess I'm curious, does the state statute trump our little policy? I would imagine it would. I would it's think actually so. an ordinance. Our ordinance? Okay. So would the state um, statutes trump town ordinance? Well, it actually, so just so you think about it, the state, the state statute does say that... Um, the town can do this. It doesn't say you have to ask permission. It just says the town can do this, and if someone has an argument about it or if somebody is, uh, feels like their property is being damaged, they have the right to this process that I just read, doesn't which is to have, anything. right, doesn't mean you're gonna get anything, but that means that they have a right to the process. So the only thing missing from the state, from the state ordinance that is that it says, or state statute rather, is that it doesn't say, the town must ask permission. We added that into our town policy. So I just but it says install. The policy says install, not replace. So I don't really see that that policy has okay, anything yeah. to do with this at all. The, you mean that the state statute says? No, I'm saying our ordinance says oh, install, right. that you need permission to install okay. from the, and we replace, and we do not yeah. need permission. I thought there was somewhere that I read, maybe it was a different section, um, I just want to say, so I've got this ordinance this here. It's not a policy, it's an ordinance. It's gone through all the ordinance process. But general policy, all expenses, legal or otherwise, shall be borne by the applicant, and da 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 da, including installing culverts. So, I mean, there are, it's, again, this is a really crappy ordinance. There's actually not one single statutory citation. The ordinance should be built on state statute. And state stat an ordinance can be a little tougher 
than state statutes. State statutes are the minimum. But this doesn't have any single citation. It feels like a fever dream. That's, that's the whole thing. Well, wasn't, a wasn't that set up back in 2003 so that somebody wouldn't, so the town wouldn't put a, a culvert across the road and then just dump it onto somebody into their driveway? It was, that the town had a, a certain responsibility to make sure that water got to the waterway mm -hmm. without. Which this is what it's doing. Yeah. In this particular instance. Right. But it's very unclear, you know, if this is a landowner versus a town, there's not any clarification here about who well, who the parties are. There, it, it's very, very vague. You know, the state statute leans toward towns doing what they have to do to avoid what Eric's talking about, which is blowing out a road. If I want to divert water away from my property by putting a, by, a, you know, getting some sort of culvert across the road, I would have to make sure that everybody has my permission because I'm just a private landowner. Yeah, but under what scenario do private landowners come up to you, Eric, and say, right. I'd like to, to install a culvert across the road because it's, you know, causing whatever? Yes, Shelley? <coughs> Yeah, I was, uh, I'm not sure how long ago, I think it was like 20 years ago, and, and Lamel was in charge, actually uh, put a cover across the road going on our property um, when my uncle owned it. And um, he just asked permission. He didn't get nothing in writing. Just said, fine, that's okay. Divert the water. So I think that's how it used to be in the old days, where they didn't really get anything in writing. They just asked the landowner. The landowner said, okay, and they just did it. But, but where did that culvert, where was that culvert placed? On a private driveway? Like right no, right across, across the road on Knox Road. And actually, it washed out this last storm. Yeah, so now I got to go on back the way it used so to be that was a long time ago. Private person saying, I'd like a culvert placed across. It was the a road road. commissioner. That was a road commissioner. Oh, no, road no, road. it was actually with the town asked us if, we, if he could do it because it was washing out somebody's driveway further down the road. Oh, I see. Yeah. So Shelly's just saying, in terms yeah. of permission, it was like a. Yeah, uh, yeah. right, right. Well, well so, but my argument is that every single culvert, and we have hundreds and hundreds of culverts, are draining on folks' property. That's just what happens. It goes either. Exactly. Well, that's what I was trying to say before. 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 That's what I was trying to say well, the other thing too, um, what is this thing? Can I, I just say that as a yeah. been, having been a town clerk for 11 and a half years, never has have I received anything to record for a culvert. Yeah, in my time, ever. Okay. So, but the but the reality is that it's here. It's written in here, and it's been interpreted a certain way. And we know that lawyers like to interpret things certain ways. Sure. So that's why I think it's important that. Um, we get some more clarity from our lawyer, and then I will let you know, um, Eric, um, next steps. And you said Todd was going to be presenting a written formal recommendation yep. to Let's keep the culture. you're saying about the poor language. Yeah. Because it says, uh, when replacing the culvert across the town road, which will divert water onto a private property, the culvert owner, which in that case is, is the owner. town. But it, the whole section above that is talking about uh, Updating. private owners Updating. Uh, applying for uh, culvert um, right. installation. So yeah, I think the intent was that it was referring to private owners, but the way it's worded it is poor. Yep, okay. So, so in other words, we're just going to do more research before you schedule it, if, before considering scheduling it here. That's what yes, I'm we're going to put. Uh, we're we're going to do a little bit more investigation with uh, Rob Halper, and before we schedule a hearing, if what if he recommends that we have one, and before we potentially start digging again. Yep. Are there any ramifications if we do have a big storm before this is connected with Richard that he should be aware of? Um, like I think I'm, probably legally no, but um, unless we, um, I don't know, have any, how many people were there when he said you couldn't do it? There was a, hand, there was a handful of people. So we have witnesses that he said we couldn't do the work. I, don't, I mean, certainly perhaps if we had a big storm and something happened, we could find him, but, you know, that becomes another 
legal quagmire well, because I don't think that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> getting the money exactly. Getting well, that's money. what I'm saying. If we should give him a heads up that if something happens, um, this could happen. It's a threat. Yeah, I um, I don't actually want to do that. I don't think that's going to be helpful in terms no. of just no, relationship yeah. building. No, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, either. I'm not going to do that. So, um, okay, so let's move on. It's 610. We're supposed to be... Out of here. Out of here. All right, so we're done with the highways, right, folks? Yes. Okay. Um, can I just ask one more quick question? How many um, miles of dirt roads do we have? 60? 49. No, 49. Nine. Of dirt? It was, it was almost 50. Yeah. Okay. 49 of dirt. And how much two, of... Two or three of paved. Uh, a little bit more than that. Okay, and how much does callus have? I'm just curious. Do any of them? They seem a lot callus. They have, they have the got a lot of roads. Hmm? They have the most in Vermont. They have the most in Vermont? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Liz. Before we go on, Lila Macy's here, uh, and she's in. Oh, okay. So we can switch to. Yeah, why don't yeah. we jump to you then, Lila, so you can leave? Um, here. So actually, yeah, while you're here too, Eric, probably. Um, okay, so proving nice to meet you, Lila. I'm Liz. It's, it's Leah. Oh, it's sorry. Leah. It's That's Leah. okay. I have family members. It's, it's still Leah. 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 Okay. All right. Leah. That's a pretty name. Call me anything right. but Leah for dinner, babe. Okay. So <laughs> Leah. Um, welcome. And so last time we we um, passed over this because we felt like we needed more information about where the cut was going to go. And so Eric, do you want to? It's it's uh, 1,700 feet from the wood row, or excuse me, the uh, West Hill and Macy Road intersection, which is like just over three tenths of a mile. So this is where they want to put the driveway. Okay. And where is Leila's well? No, no. You're thinking of. Uh, you're thinking about the other issue. Yep. Yeah. Gordon. You're thinking Gordon. about the driveway issue. Oh. Okay. What's this? Yeah, it's way past her house. Okay. Why did that hill? <laughs> no, the, her spring line is okay. Re there. Refresh my memory. What is this? She was concerned that the the driveway might go across her spring line. Leila? No. No. Let's talk about Leila. Well, okay. No. Gloria Hobson was concerned about the driveway. Oh, going, remember? And so the guys okay. went out there. They inspected it, and that's where uh, Eric. This is the rest. same story, right? Yes. Okay. Gloria She's was concerned about street. her well. The way is before her spring. It's, it's, she was confused of where it was going. Oh, okay. So she thought it was going to, it peed on her spring line. When we went and looked at it, I'm like, uh, nope. Okay, so it's not going to bother her spring line. No, it's not okay, so then um, did you have any comments or did you just want to hear what we had to say? I just happened to be up for okay. some time in March. Okay, <laughs> so was if it's... Was get past. Yeah, so that was, that was the reason Baby that we steps. passed over it is because we, we wanted to just double check on this woman's well line and... Perfect. Or spring line, rather. And it sounds like it's not an issue at all. No, and that confusion, that's all. your recommendation is that we do allow for that. Is there a um, culvert? Mm -hmm. Yes, 18 inch, I believe, at the time. Okay, and that's going to be big enough? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is the state standard. Okay. Is and there a motion? There's on both sides of the road there. There right? is, yeah. There's dishes on both sides. Okay. Make a motion that we accept the Macy uh, drive. Okay. And is there a second? All second. right. Zara seconds. All those in favor of approving um, this driveway access permit for Leila? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Okay. <laughs> Woohoo! Congratulations. Well, you may have a drive. Closer to being home. <laughs> All right. Uh, Liz, can you sign? Yes, yeah, I'll sign that. Um, let's see. Select board signature. Here we go. Alrighty. Okay. So um, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting if it so intrigues you. It does. Um, and perhaps if you're moving up here, you'll say, oh, I'd like to get involved in town politics. <laughs> I actually just met my new neighbor, and they said, once we're settled in, we'd like to get involved in town. I'm like, all right, good. Okay, so we are now on to reviewing of website proposals and selection of website company. Did we have anything to um, So I sent out a Lowry 
kindly did a very detailed RFP. I think we got over 30 responses from around the world. Wow. And I have uploaded those to, it, Larry gave me a Google, Google Docs thing since. Uh, when did he do that? When did he do that? Yeah, last week. And uh, I uploaded them to the Google Docs issue. Uh, most of the website, most of the RFPs are out of this world, anywhere from 20,000 to 100,000. I mean, many of the proposals were to a total. We did get a couple of local ones, like Essex, that are about three, about three to 5,000. So my assumption is that that's probably where Lowry's gonna lead. I just don't have the qualifications okay. to make a recommendation. So I think he'll look at those later. Did this I'm, include the new requirements? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So we had new requirements for um, accessibility, which yeah. are, makes it a lot more um, a lot more detailed than what a normal website looks like. So things like closed captioning, being able to hear it, I think all those kinds of things that make it easier Such for people to access. To yeah. Okay, so, um, but, the, okay, what else had he done an RFP for? That was something else. Well, it's supposed to be for IT services, but we haven't gotten to that yet. Oh, the IT services, right. Okay, so the, so I'm sorry, the now that we've received these RFPs, we're having him look at them? Well, I, he wrote, the, he wrote the, the, the RFP, and now we've got, I've got 40, I've got okay. all these proposals. I can bring them to the board next time. I'm just well, qualified. I don't, I don't. No, no, no. Yeah, he, I mean, I'm sure he, he's not, he's not the most, he happens to be the most. Well, like, he kindly why, said, like, yeah, just say go vote him, and I'll take a look and give me a. You know, yeah, a okay, because he's look. not home for two more weeks. He's in we Colorado. Okay, so I don't think he's really going to be looking at them, and so I don't know if we have anyone in town that maybe has an expertise. Um that would know anything about websites? It's not a pressing issue. It's not a pressing, okay. We've already, we've done the due diligence. That's true, it's not, yeah, we, if yeah. We, okay. If a lawsuit happens, we can say, point to the RFP and say we Okay, perfect. All right, so then IT services and setting out RFPs, that we have not done yet. No, that I wanted to know if you guys wanted to do that. That's okay. because we do have an informal contract with our with RB Tech, and when I say informal, I mean that it's a pretty big contract, and it probably should have been bid out to begin with. I don't know how it happened that there was no bidding for that contract. We should absolutely go out for this. Yeah. yeah. So what we need is an RFP, though. Right. And so, um, and so in the meantime, though, are we just paying them our fees? Right. They're not like saying, "Oh, you have to sign a contract with us right now." I don't know. I, I don't deal with our with RB Tech. Okay. I'm not allowed. So, um, and did Lowry say he would help with an RFP? Or I think he did. He did say that? Yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you, Lowry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's nice to have a, uh, someone who knows this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, are we okay with waiting for a couple weeks till he gets back? Well, yeah. waited for a couple of years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty. Um, the only issue is that there, I think RB Tech wants us to do something with the server, and I think Lowry said we should go ahead and do that. But that that's something that Cheryl's been dealing with, and she's not here tonight. She's okay. Here. All right, so I don't think there's any action that we're taking on this. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I would, I would caution doing anything with that server, uh, because if part of this proposal is to absolutely move to the cloud-based system, mm -hmm. The needs for that server are completely different. Right, but I think there might be some like basic service. stuff. Yeah, as long as the number, the proposal that they gave us for the server last time um, was full boat. Oh God. That's brighter. So Big one. I would not recommend the town move on that. Put that in the minutes. Okay, put them in the minutes. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we're maybe we'll just wait to see what Larry says about the server too. Yeah, yeah, okay. it'd be cool to do them at the same time so we know that yeah, we're yeah, talking yeah. to each other. Yeah. Okay, maybe. whatever happened to that man that came? Whatever happened to that? He pulled his. He had extenuating circumstances. Yeah, he couldn't do it. Okay. Oh, family. Bob Butler yeah. from yeah. Waterbury. He yeah. had a family issue that he right. needed. So had we done a. RFP? Not yeah. for the IT. For so the, how did he show up? That was for the uh, uh, somebody check for the IT. It was somebody that I was working with at Panergy had made a recommendation. Okay, so we just asked we him pushed, to come in. We pushed. No, I think there was a, a small request. Well, didn't um, Dorinda do make a request? Yeah, it was back when oh, she was still right. here. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, um, so we had done an RFP. And he yeah. came in. He gave us a proposal. Nice. Um, 
Yeah. yeah, he just couldn't make the commitment at the time, given right. his family. Right. Okay. There, I will say there is some overlap. For example, on the website, people they I think they do some IT stuff, and there I've gotten names from the other town clerks who are also quite interested. So there might be some overlap between some of these things, which would probably be ideal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Righty then. I can't wait to have a new website. It's so ours is so antiquated. So what? Antiquated. Oh, it's terrible. All right, so um, we are now moving on to accepting George Longnecker's resignation from the Budget Committee and Conservation Commission. Well, I do not accept it. <laughs> Just kidding, George. I do. Is there a move? Is there a motion to accept motion. George? Well, let's discuss it first and uh, say, George, thank you. Yeah. For all that you have done for this town. And for your um, volunteer um, leadership on the Budget Committee and Conservation Commission, so we you will be sorely missed. But it sounds like you are moving to your um, closer to be with your family. So that's awesome. Yep. So is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Okay, to Randy accept. accepts the resignation. Is there a second? I'll second. Oh, thank you, Vic. Vic seconded. All those <laughs> in favor of George Longnecker's resignation say. Aye. Uh, Thank you, George. <laughs> Thank you, Thank George. You, George. Okay, so considering the um, Middlesex Conservation Commission's request to appoint Kim Hagen, she sent a nice letter saying that she was interested in being on the Middlesex Conservation Commission. Um, is there are there, is there any discussion about that? No. I, I would just ask if any other parties were I showed interest. I don't believe they did. Did they, Sarah? I don't think so. Submitted a letter saying, but I think they have a couple openings. I think they have a couple openings, yeah. I'll make a motion that Kim Hagen is the new on the Conservation Committee. Oh, great. And is there a second? I'll second it. All right. All those in favor of Kim Hagen for Middlesex Conservation Commission say aye. 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 Thank you, Kim, for your volunteering to be on the Middlesex Conservation Commission, and congratulations on your new post. Okay, so we've done um, the curb cut for Leila Macy, and we um, have Macy, orders, and any other business? Yeah, do you want, I, for some reason it's not on this agenda, I have it on one of the agendas. Uh, do you want to do a birth update? Ooh, yeah. Okay, so there's some bad news about Merp. The Municipal Energy Resilience. They couldn't get it moving? Nope. We are allegedly not invited to apply <laughs> <I'm> sorry <laughs> <laughs> because we are not one of the they got a influx of applications over something like 120 something they don't have enough so they're giving it to the um they're allowing 80 of the most energy um cost burden towns the invitation to apply we are not one of the energy, the um, highest rating energy um, cost to our town, per this report that they cite back in 2019. So, strangely enough, I kept getting invitations like, here's the application, here's what you need for your applying, yet it said you're not eligible to apply on some other emails. So, I reached out to Sam Lash and I said, Sam, what gives? And she's like, you've been at the top of my mind. I promise I'm going to get in touch with you. I have yet to hear from Sam because she's super busy. I know she's very busy. So um, Sam Lash from Regional Planning Commission. So that means that there is no money. If this is true, there is no money to apply for any of our energy upgrades. Is this place. for the town hall? For anything, for the town hall, for the. So we should just take it right off the ballot, right? I think. Well, no. So the yeah, ballot. It's already on the ballot, and that was not about. <laughs> her. So that was. Yeah. That was about the town hall bond. Yes. I'm gonna be that guy. What's that guy, Randy? Um. A big push for the renovation. Hinged on that funding yes. when we looked at yep. the. It did. Uh, the difference between new construction or renovation. Yeah, or any it of that did. Kind of oh stuff. no, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I know I'm going to hear plenty of chatter about uh, the progress and and where we go from here. 
No, oh, um, yes, I know. So. And, so I was hoping to get, um, and to be honest with you too, even if we were eligible to apply, their recommendations, you can only do the recommendations, and the recommendations were only like $100,000. Yeah. So it wasn't enough. Um, and I think it was for both the fire station and this. So um, you're right. You're definitely right about that. And, um, and so we didn't learn about this after this got sent for the bond, um, for the question on the bond. So I think what will probably end up happening is, so um, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but my guess is that the bond would get voted down. I think it would anyway, but I, uh, if I, right. I think we should be on front porch forum recommending from the select board that you do not, that you vote no. Okay, I, yeah, and I, I, I think that... Can if, we take it off the ballot? No, no she says it's already on the ballot. You can so technically it's, screw it up. What's that? You can technically, uh, you can technically screw it up. Just never hold a bond here, just never run the ads, never hold the okay. hearing. I have this feeling that that's, just so you know, and if that's what the, 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 the pleasure of the board wants to do, I do not believe that's what the subcommittee is going to want to do. They're going to want to go ahead with it, although, you know, I still think that um, it's just there's not going to be enough money to do these changes. Uh, that I recommend, may I speak? Yep. So the bond says up to $2.5 million for renovations in Town Hall. We have an elevator, a lift that, as you can see, it is stopped working. It can't work at all. Yeah. And we have a heating system that cannot be repaired. Yeah. And if you get that money, if by any chance that bond passes, that we don't screw it up technically, we don't have to take, like Peter would say, we don't have to take the full $2.5 yeah. million. We can, I believe, we can run this by the lawyer. We can, we can apply it to upgrades at town hall. That's yes. So thank you for saying that because it, 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 that is exactly what we've been thinking too. On the, we're like, well, we do know that there are things that have to get done. If we're going to continue to reside in this building, things have to get done, and that includes fixing the elevator. He couldn't be here tonight because of the elevator. Oh, That's it. Okay, yeah, okay. fixing the elevator and getting a heating system, right? Those are two main things that have to get done. And we also have some vault issues, but that might be the vault we could work dealt on, with in a different way. The heating on system, on that, yeah, that is two thousand five hundred dollars. No, that really that you can do, but I don't think. There's Why don't we just? It is. I can smell. So okay, so at any rate, we know that things have to get done. We know that, um, and that will probably be in our messaging. We're going back to the table with BIA and saying this isn't working and they don't know yet that we haven't gotten the MERT because I'm still waiting to hear from Sam, is there any hope? Because it's possible that, this is what I fear, these, these towns aren't really shovel ready. You have to be shovel ready for this too. This has to be spent by the end of next year and, and committed by December of 2024. And these towns are gonna be invited to apply but they're not really gonna be able to, right? Because they're not gonna be able to like deal with spending the money and so i'm like well why can't i apply anyway and get rejected right because it's a lot of work right it's a lot of work to apply for one of these these big grants but that's what i'm hoping to hear from sam is that they're going to recommend that everybody applies anyway and that we just maybe there won't get enough applications from those 80 towns that had that energy burden i don't know i don't know so it's bad news. Bad news. Yeah. Nothing good about it. No. Who who would say, just theoretically, who would say, or who could say, does it have to go through this board? How would it work if we had some money or we set some money aside and we wanted a we had a bunch of it to do the 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 elevator, or if we wanted to do the radon, or if we wanted to do any of that stuff. I mean, we've spent a lot of money. We spent enough money to fix a few of these things, and we're not, we're not getting much of it. Well, we are in a way. The capital, uh, the the capital budget is is but putting who would money say, aside. We're going to do this. Oh, let's let's call up the radon guy. Let's call up the let's what if the furnace goes to hell tomorrow? We have to buy a furnace, right? But but who? Who says that? Who That's decides? not. Who's, who says what? 
Who says who has do he's, that? He's asking you who do. has the authority you, to select say select I do. You do. do the way. select board does. Right. But we but we don't but have the money. But we haven't too much. Well, okay, we, Vic. We haven't ha because we we knew that there was some potentials. Yeah. Funding sources that now we Here so again, now we hope, have a heating hope system. Is it not a good strategy. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So what are you saying, Vic? You want to fix the heater? Yeah. Let's do it. If it need, if it breaks, fix it. I mean, I don't. This isn't just Vic Dwyer saying this. There's a lot of people saying, why don't you just, you know, do do things to okay. to make it better. I mean, why don't you why don't you fix the mold? Why don't you you know, it's, it's not so a billion dollars. Because it costs dollars. money and you have to put put it in the budget and we don't have it in the budget. So we can't just, unless it's an emergency and then we have to but take out a loan for it. why can't you put it in it. the budget? We can, Vic. We can totally, we can, we can present a budget that's 25% increase to say we're doing all this, right? Because that's what it would be. It'd be a 25% increase. Okay. We can do that, but we're not going to. We're not 25% gonna... increase in our total budget? In our total budget. Yeah, you wouldn't have to. Go ahead. Well, we do have a town hall fund. I just don't know how right. much is in there. There's only like $20,000 in it, I think. What do yeah. you think, Randy? Uh, Maybe forty. Yeah, I don't remember what's exactly in there. I could probably look yeah. it up. I, I hear what Victor's saying. Um, and, and I mean, as the board made a decision not to include that stuff in the budget this year because they were moving towards the renovation. Um, and and you know uh, if we're dealing with it now um at some point you're absolutely right we just need to say we need to do this and we need to figure out how to pay for it right um but it, i definitely don't want to be throwing good money after bad if if we're gonna go throw money at something when somebody else is willing to pay for it and that's unfortunately this time we got caught with in a situation where it just didn't work um but that was the intent that right was and it would have like i mean they they went so far as to send the guys to do all these assessments and produce a 25 page report for each town and then literally a week later say i'm sorry you can't apply like what? What is? What kind of business is that? Right? That just that and makes I, no sense. I don't know how many meetings we attended when this first came out. Or they're, right. They're like absolutely, you're going to get some money. Yeah. The, I mean, it was like, and then literally, this was like, what? Like this came out of utter left field. It's just like FEMA telling us, just give us our bills. We're going to take care right. Of it. And then yeah. they don't. Here's some spreadsheets right. that you need to fill out and more hurdles. But I I do agree with Vic at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, before this winter comes, we need to just figure out how we're going to pay for a new heating system for this building. Okay. We've got heating system and woes for the fire department, the town garage, I think. All three of them. We don't want a heating one up there that goes out the window too quick. <laughs> so, yeah. But what I'm saying is we need to be intentional about having that conversation and moving on it. And we need to do it sooner than later because, whoops, Mark right now for, at the budget committee is trying to add into the capital and set it, it, capital inventory what we need to add yeah now right now it's a super light year which is great news you know we don't want to be like oh we want to spend all this money on this now there's probably forty five thousand dollars anyway just to replace the main plant not to mention any kind and of ex auxiliary cost for those heating systems forty five thousand for the heating system is that what you said yeah between between what the work that needs to be done you know that's probably what you're looking at mm -hmm. I mean, I hate. To, I know you guys want to get off fossil fuel, and I understand that. But I mean, all we really need is a new boiler down there. Yeah. We've done all the duct work. We just need a. But we're not asking just because this, this heating system is really stupid. I, I'm not talking about just for this building. Okay. Well, I when I, when I say that, I'm not talking about just for this okay. building because right. the fire department still needs their heating system replaced. I mean, our heating system is way older than that. Well, yeah. I also think it's in the town plan to move away from fossil fuel, and I just think it's the right thing to do. I'm sorry. Like yeah. we're we have terrible climate change, and our roads are being flooded constantly. I, not I don't with think whether we have a fossil fuel furnace in this in this. Uh, building or not it's not going to really mitigate that much 
of course not, but every little fossil fuel furnace helps. I, I know, so and I, 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 I agree it. with you, but in terms of like, if we're not going to do $2 million for the building, let's just at least allow these ladies to have heat. Oh, of course. Work, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I'm not against I mean, doing a heating system. And I, you know, I also, I, I mean, maybe you're right, Nick. Maybe we just say every year we are throwing in a $100,000 project to get the things that need to get done here and hope some that. Some of them. You know, hope that this is going to, you know, solve some of the, you know, issues that we're having, right? Like, maybe we never deal with the plumbing. Maybe we just always have it be that nobody can come here, right? We have no community hall. That's fine. But, yes, sir. I just want, you know, this is, this is a problem that was created by a select board for 40 years that did nothing. So, right. it's a bummer that you guys have to deal with this now. Because it's all they crashing at once. They didn't do anything they for 40 years. It. It's too bad Peter's not here. <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't do anything for 40 years, including this, the we shed. Did paint, the, we did paint, and um, that's what we always did. We did paint. Yes. paint. Well, I remember that. We've always paid for that guy to paint. Yeah, that was, and an unbid contract just hired a friend to go paint. Yeah. But I'm thinking, like, even if we just got some Renais, we could probably just get rid of the boiler downstairs and just do a temporary uh, heating solution that way. I mean, we can we can patch this until we get through this. But actually, that might be good for the mold too. I think it'll be good for the mold yeah. because the heating system's stupid. The air, the air downstairs in the basement is comes comes down. It goes straight up. There's also an electric heating system downstairs. Believe it or not, that's incredibly costly. So I mean, this is all just yeah. you guys are just the victims of deferred maintenance, and I'm yeah. sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree with you about doing things right, but I also agree with Vic, like when I go to Virginia and we do this great recycling program in Vermont and the Nobody millions recycles. of people oh, in know. Virginia are just tossing things in the trash. Oh, I know, they do it in Florida too. They toss it everywhere. Um, and right. in fact, I think we end up tossing our stuff, most of our stuff too. So, um, so um, well, that'll be something that we talk about in budget season, but I think that, that um, I do believe that, um, first let me at least hear from Sam, if this is absolutely hopeless, because e even if I apply today, they'll tell me by in a month, right? They'll say, no, you're not approved. If, if her rec I'm not going to do any work unless I, unless I get a recommendation from her, because right now they're telling me you can't apply. So I'm not going to just apply without her saying, well, it turns out actually you should apply. Um, but let's just, he's like, I just want to go home, mom. It's just adorable. <laughs> All right, so that's the update. Any other matters that come before the board? Uh -oh. I'm just going to give you guys a heads up that we're going to need a lot of stuff for this election. We're going to need a lot of volunteers, like maybe 20 to 40. Why? Counting because ballots? Because the parties did not nominate a slate, neither party nominated a slate of JPs, which means that for the most voted on ballot in history in Middlesex, we're going to have a write-in campaign for JPs. That's six slots times 4, 1,400. So you figure out how many write-ins. They're going to be, we only have two names on the ballot. That's Dorinda and Jan Thoron. 8,400. Is that 8,400 names we have to calculate? Only if people write them in. Only if they write them in. They will. <laughs> will they? Most people just check the box when there's a name, right? I mean, like if somebody voted for me to be JP, I'd be like, no, I can't. No, I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't I want to. Like, I also need JPs. We also need JPs. Oh, so uh, we're going to have some BOA oh, meetings and some BCA meetings. We have two more B BOA. We have two more um, abatement requests. Can so, you do a call out on front porch forum for JPs? JPs needed? To, that will cut Don't start you the love love? Campaign. No, oh. I don't want, don't write it. <laughs> do any, the existing JPs don't want to? Well, it's too late now. They've no, no party, no, neither nobody, party. Nobody submitted? No one submitted. There were only two independents, Dorinda? and that's Jan and Dorinda. I was just thinking if we had like three or four volunteers, then we could have those three or four volunteers' names. Oh, I don't know. You volunteer. know, that people can be like, here are, here are write ins, potential write ins. I do. No, okay. I'm not saying hey, nothing. it's a thought. <laughs> it's not always a good thought. <laughs> What's the name of the new employee? 
A bear. Okay. Ben. Ben. Skipper, you are. And he's a. Um, Middlesex resident. And he's got. Um, Kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the CDL and everything. Yes, yes. That's it's got like class A. Gotcha. All right. Oh, you're so cute, Miss You. All righty. Are we adjourned? Oh, whoops. Any other matters that come before the board? <laughs> no. All right, then I I do hereby command us to leave by <laughs> ending this meeting at six thirty-seven. Thank you all for attending. <laughs> Bye.